اللہ وقفا و صلاۃ وسلام علیہ الزین استفا اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد ارسلنا نوح و ابراہیم و جعلنا فی ذریت ہم النبوۃ والکتاب فبن ہم محتدم و کثیر من ہم فاسقون ثم قفینا علی آثارہم برسلنا و قفینا بعیس ابن مریم و آتیناہ الانجیل و جعلنا فی قلوب الذین اتبعوہ رعفتا و رحمہ و رحبانیتا نبتدعوہا ما کتبناہا علیہم اللہ ابتغاء رضوان اللہ فما رعوہا حق رعایتها فآتینا الذین آمنوا منہم اجرہم و کثیر منہم فاسقون صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و حلل اقدتا من لسانی یفقہو قولی And verily we sent Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam as messengers and we appointed the prophethood and messengerhood and the book and the law in the progeny of both of them that is Nuh and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam so some from among their progeny they are rightly guided people but many are transgressors then we made our messengers to follow in their footsteps thumma qaffayna ala asarihim bi rusulina and we made isa son of maryam to follow and we gave him injil wa ja'alna fi qulubi alladhina tabauhu rafatan wa rahmah and we placed in the hearts of those who followed hazrat masih alayhi salatu wassalam compassion tenderness and mercy this is a special phenomenon that the followers of hazrat isa alayhi salatu wassalam they had extreme passions in their hearts compassionate merciful why was it so let me explain it in the light of the very well known theory of dialectical materialism <laughs> to every thesis there is an antithesis and then you know a synthesis this does happen in the world of matter this does not happen in religion religion is the same from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it became you know in the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it became complete but it started with hazrat adam deen is the same but in the world of matter material matters this process is going on and to some extent this phenomenon is applicable to the behavior of men to the behavior of people that is the domain of psychology the if there is some extreme in some society for in some aspect people who revolt and rebel against that they will go to the other extreme because the ulama the religious leaders of bani israel they had taken this worldly life as their goal they had made their religion a profession they were traders in religion they were amassing wealth through this religious office that they were holding so actually it was a reaction that the followers of hazrat masih alayhi salatu wassalam went to the other extreme and that is renunciation of this world renunciation of this world of matter world of players asceticism and then you know it reached the climax and to extreme position of monasticism not marrying living in monasteries all the life leading as unmarried people men and women both absolutely against nature on which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them so that was actually a result then we can have another thing an apology for these people they committed a mistake but an apology for them because for them the biggest ideals are two personalities jesus himself jesus christ 
He saved the Maryam. He didn't marry. No time came in his life for marriage. Second, John the Baptist. Yahya ibn Zakriya, he also didn't marry. He was also a very saintly person, ascetic person, living outside the cities or towns, in the wood. That is why, you know, in the Bible you find the words, a cry from the wilderness. I'm a cry from the wilderness. So for them there are apologies, there are some bases because they took to that wrong attitude. So we must have, we must think about others sympathetically. If they committed a mistake, what was the reason? Why did they go that way? So to, that, to understand, you know, that phenomenon, I have given you two things. Number one, the phenomenon of dialectalism. So actually, everything which has gone to extreme, as a reaction, there will be extreme. The extreme reaction to capitalism was communism. No personal ownership even of the articles of use, going to that extreme end. You can't own even a house. You can't own a, even a bicycle. Nothing. Everything is nationalized. That was the extreme. So actually, man has a tendency, and human society collectively also has a tendency to go to extremes. Jumps from one extreme to other extreme, from ifrat to tafreed. Because only Allah can give us the middle way, the balanced way, the sirat al mustaqim, the sawas sabil. When you turn your eyes away from Allah's guidance, well, you are left to these natural phenomena of action and reaction and thesis and antithesis and synthesis and then synthesis, again becoming a thesis and then creating an antithesis from its own bosom and then a synthesis, a process will go. So actually this is one of the causes. The other cause, I told you, because their ideals, Hazrat Masih, Hazrat Yahya, alayhi salatu was salam, both didn't marry. So it became a virtue with them. To remain unmarried is something which is very to be admired, something to be followed. Anyhow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing out it to be a mistake. وَجَعَلْنَا فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا رَحْفَةً وَرَحْمَةً Compassion, mercy, وَرَحْبَانِيَّةً اِبْتَدَعُوهَا As for monasticism and ascetism, that they invented theirs themselves. مَا كَتَبْنَاهَا عَلَيْهِمْ We had not written that on them. We had not made it imperative on them. We have not made it mandatory on them. It was not from our side, it was an innovation, an invention. It was a bid'ah. What is bid'ah? Something which you invent. You don't have any basis in the book of Allah, you don't have any basis in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you don't have any basis in the practice of the sahaba, of the companions of the Prophet, and you are starting something new. This is bid'ah. This is innovation. So, arhbaniya also is innovation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we didn't write it down on them. Ma katabna halif. Kataba yakto, I told you, to make something imperative, make something essential, make something mandatory. Kotiba alaykum al-siyam, kotiba alaykum al-qital. So kotiba, ma katabna alayhim. We didn't make it mandatory on them. We didn't make it imperative for them. They themselves invented. Why they invented? As I told you, this is emotional phenomenon, going to extreme. But in our deen, the Prophet ﷺ has made it absolutely clear. La rahbani yatafil Islam. There's no place of monasticism in Islam. And the second hadith is, Rahbani yatu hazad deen al jihadu fi sabirillah. The only monasticism in deen of Islam, in our deen, is jihad fi sabirillah. When you are going for jihad, for qital fi sabirillah, you are undergoing pains. You have to give up the comforts of your home life. You don't have those couches and beds to sleep. So actually this is the monasticism in Islam. Not that monasticism of depriving you of any pleasure of the world, not marrying, keeping aloof, living away in the caves or in the monastery, not marrying the whole... No, this is absolutely haram in Islam. 
La Rahbaniyat. That's a very categorical statement. And you know the Prophet was, how careful he was, let me tell you. There is a hadith. But I, I want to give you two hadiths. One is that the report came to the Prophet وسلم, about Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala al-Humah. The father is very well known, Amr ibn al-As, the governor of Egypt, conqueror of Egypt. He was a big general, a big statesman, one of the biggest statesmen that Arabia had ever produced, Amr ibn al-As. He was sent as the ambassador to the court of Nagus, Najashi, by the kuffar, he was still the kafir at that time, to fetch back the muhajirin who had gone and taken refuge in Abyssinia. So he held a very high position among the hierarchy of the Quraysh. But the son Abdullah was the reverse. He was a dervish, given to worshipping and praying and keeping psalm every day, praying to Allah all the night. Then the report came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He summoned Hazrat Abdullah ibn Ab Ab Amr ibn al-As and he said, Ya Abdullah, awala mukhbar, anna katasumu dhar, wa taqumu layl. Ya Abdullah, O oh Abdullah, have I not been informed that you keep praying all the night and you are with psalm, with fasting, every day? Qala bala ya Rasulullah. He said, okay, O oh Messenger of Allah, this is so. Now, note the wordings. Don't do it. La tafal. Fa inna li nafsika alayka haqqan. Fa inna li zawjika alayka haqqan. Fa inna li zawrika alayka haqqan. Your own body has right upon you. Your wife has right upon you. Your friends and visitors have right upon you. So this is the balance that Muhammad taught, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now there's the more important hadith. Three, An Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an. This report is from Hazrat Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala an. And this is muttafaqun alayh. Both Bukhari and Muslim agree on its authenticity. Hazrat Anas says, Jaa salasatu rahtin ila buyuti azwaji nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yas'aloon an ibadati nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three people came to the houses of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they inquired, made inquiries about how much worship, how much prayers, for how long he prays at the night, how many fasts he keeps each month, etc., etc. When it was told to them, they, they thought it is not much. They expected that the Prophet would not be sleeping for even a single second. He is Prophet of Allah, he should be praying to Allah all the night. But you know, because he was the Prophet, they couldn't say anything. Qalu, they said, فَأَيْنَا نَحْنُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَقَدْ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ But we have no ratio proportion with Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He is Nabi, he is Masoom, he is infallible. And even if there is possibly any mistake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already pardoned him of all his shortcomings, possible shortcomings. So this much worship is sufficient for him, but not for us. So one of them said, Qala ahaduhum ma amma ana fausalli layl abada. One of them said, I will keep praying the whole night. Wa qala al-akharu ana asumu al-dahar wa la'uftir. The second said, I will always keep fast. Every day, I will never, you know, leave any day without fast. And the third one said, well, I'll keep aloof from all women. I will never marry. The news reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also. Now he came. He went himself, the Prophet went to them. فَجَاءَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ لَيْهِمْ فَقَالْ أَنْتُمُ الَّذِينَ قُلْتُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا He asked, you are the people who said so and so and so. أَمَا وَاللَّهِ 
انی لاخشاکم للہ واتقاکم لہو لسن ایٹ فرام می آئی ہیو دی گریٹس ریگارڈ فار اللہ مور دین اینی ون آف یو ابائی ہارٹ از موسٹ فیئر فل آف اللہ مور دین اینی ون آف یو ولا کنی اسوم و افتر بٹ مائی پریکٹس از دیٹ آئی فاسٹ آلسو اینڈ آئی ڈونٹ فاسٹ ناٹ ان دی منتھ آف رمضان پلیز نوٹ دس از دی نفل ایڈیشنل فاسٹ واؤسلی وار مد اینڈ آئی پرے ڈیورنگ دی نائٹ آلسو اینڈ آئی سلیپ آلسو وات از ابو جن نسا اینڈ آئی بیریڈ ویمن فرام من رغب عن سنتی فلیس منی who so ever deviates from my sunnah he is not from me just look to the categorical statement the emphasis this is wrong unnatural way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men and women he has put you know the instincts in them he doesn't want that you should kill your instincts control them satisfy them through permissible means halal means if you obstruct the flow of water it will take some other route water has to find its way if you don't satisfy your urges through the right means some wrong means will be adopted and this is what happened in the history of christian monasticism they themselves have written the authors here they have written they appear to be unmarried and What should I say, you know, there was a professor, Abdul Qadir of history in Lahore, long ago. He used to say, though Elizabeth didn't marry first Elizabeth, whole her life, but she used to marry every night. That is the case. What do they do? what these fathers do their characters because this is unnatural you are putting a block on the natural instincts you are fighting yourself don't fight yourself give your body its due only through halal means قل من حرم زينة الله التي اخرج لعباده والطيبات من الرزق ask them who has forbidden the good things and permissible things and halal things of eating and adornment whatever is halal is free you can use it earn through halal means and use only halal articles and things that's only what is required of you and don't to sulif don't go don't exceed the limits You have to fulfill other obligations also. You have to make jihad for the cause of Allah also. You have to spend for the deed of Allah also. So you keep everything at its place. There's another version of this hadith, but I don't want to use, take more of time on this. I want to make one point more clear over here. Quran al-Hakim in three places gives us a very important guidance, basic guidance. Don't overdo, don't exceed the limits, don't be, go to extremes in piety even. Don't go into very details, minute details. Quran says, in tajtanibu kabaira matun hona. If you can leave the big sins that have been made haram for you, قبائل نکفر عنکم سیئیاتکم the smaller mistakes we shall wash off we shall forgive you take care of the big things no shirk no قتل no zina no riba no theft big things قبائل you take care of them don't care for very minute you know details نکفر 
ولزین یشتنی بولا کبائر الاسم والفواحش those who can you know avoid the big sins and the more evident acts of shame the smaller things you know trivial things we shall just free for the third time in surah al-najm inna rabbaka wasi'ul maghfirati wa huwa a'lamu bikum iz anshaakum min al-ard wa iz antum ajinnatun fi butuni ummahatikum fala tuzakku anfusakum huwa a'lamu biman ittaqa الذين يجتنبون كبائر الاسم والفواحش الا اللمم ان ربك واسع المغفره وهو اعلم لكم اعلم بكم اذ انشاكم من الارض واذا انتم جنه في بطون امهاتكم those who avoid the bigger sins and the more evident acts of shame except you know small things trivial things so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not care for these trivial things he will he will just wash them off this is the methodology of quran and what is our methodology in one aspect we are going very deep very deep very deep on the other side just as jesus has been reported to have said it is in gospel you are trying to get away you know the mosquitoes but full camels you are swallowing machhar chhante ho samote oot nikal jate ho very sensitive well he has said ameen loudly what come what he has done but taking riba yourself and he is also eating no worry riba is going on but rafaya then or not which is the main issue main problem main issue of debate tarawi 8 or 20 very big issue very important what about haram earning okay go on taking care of the mosquitoes but swallowing the whole camel this happens to those who go to very minute details in one aspect your view should be wholesome wide perspective keep in view all the duties and obligations allah subhanahu wa taala has put on you try to do the best you can in all of those things not one sided unbalanced this one sidedness unbalancedness takes you either to this attitude caring for the mosquitoes and devouring and swallowing the whole camels or to the extreme that you become slaves of this world or to the extreme that you you invent monasticism wa rahmaniyatan ibtadauha ma katablaha alayhim illa ibtigar izwanillah this part of this aya is quite difficult to interpret there are two ways of interpreting it number 1 we had made imperative on them only to seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala ma katabna alayhim illa ibtigha rizwanillah we had not meant, made, made this asceticism or monasticism imperative on you we had only made an imperative upon them mandatory upon them to seek the pleasure of allah and the second interpretation it is that the mistake they did commit but that mistake was out of sincerity out of good motives they wanted to please allah they thought the way of pleasing allah is this to keep absolutely away to be extremely careful if you are living in a family maybe at some time you know the love of your wife or love of your children as quran says inna min azwajikum wa auladikum aduwwal lakum fazaluhu living with them there is the possibility you might slip some time but if you keep away well you are safe so actually their motives were not wrong that is why you know in surah al fatiha it is generally the consensus of the mufassirin that maghdube alaihim by maghdube alaihim are meant the jews what a dalin and by dalin are meant the christians maghdube alaihim are those 
who went astray knowingly due to the love of this world and love of wealth and love of money, due to greed, they went astray knowingly. They are maghdubi alayhim. They are the people who have incurred the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zuribat alayhimu zillatu wal maskanatu wa ba'u bi ghadabi min Allah. But these people, they just exceeded the limits, but out of sincerity and love, out of excessive fear of Allah, out of excessive care. So that is why they are called people who went astray. Dolly. They went astray, no doubt. But the motive was not wrong, the motive was good. So this is so to say another apology for these people. Illa tigar is one illahi famaraoha haqqa de ayateha. But then they couldn't observe it as it should have been observed. To decide that I won't go near a woman is easy. But to keep away from a woman, when you have your sexual desire, when there is a, an opportunity, it's very difficult. It's better to go the right way and get married so that your urge can be satisfied through halal means. So this is what happened to the monasteries. That is why, you know, there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> Don't be over harsh to your bodies and yourselves. Shidda, shiddat. لا تشدوا على أنفسكم فيشدد الله عليكم so Allah Ta'ala will also be harsh to you when you have decided you won't do it now you are doing it it's the double crime first of all you made a decision by your own it was not made imperative by Allah and now you are not keeping your promise so you are double criminal لا تشدوا على أنفسكم فيشدد الله عليكم فَإِنَّ قَوْمًا شَدَّدُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَشَدَّدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ فَتِلْكَ بَقَايَاهُمْ فِي السَّوَامِ وَالدَّيَارِ This is reported by Abu Dawood rahimahullah and it is from Anas رضي الله تعالى There were people before you who became over harsh to their bodies and to their own selves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was also then harsh with them. But they didn't keep the, the, their promises, the determination, they broke the covenants. So now you can find the, the, the bakaya. These are the signs that you find in the monasteries. There are these, those people. You can see and go and see for yourself the character. Then they didn't observe it as they should have observed it. They couldn't keep their determination as they should have kept it. Because it's a rule. Nafl, voluntary salah. When you have started, it becomes wajib. If you don't, if you can't do it, don't start it. Once you begin, it becomes wajib. So if you have put any restrictions on you, then you have to observe them. Now keep them. Otherwise, you will be brought to the book. So why to make such decisions against the teachings of the Prophet We should have the model of Muhammad the balanced model. You have a very beautiful, a very balanced model in the person of Muhammad, in the person of the Messenger of Allah. Follow it. Tell to them, if you love Allah, follow me. Allah will love you. So you keep the model of Muhammad, the balanced Muhammad of, model of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just as he said, Usalli warqut, during the night, I pray also, but I sleep also. I give my body rest, which is the right of this body, I have to give it. I keep fast, nafl, and I don't keep it. Then I have married, you know, I have wives, 
I have children. I am leading a family life. This is my way. An nikahu bin sunnati. This is my way. Leading a family life, married life. A normal life is when you have you are living in a family. So that is actually this as I told you, the sequence is that first of all, don't be like those who whose hearts hardened, the Jews. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعَبَدِ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَسِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ On the one extreme you have the examples of the Jews. They are the slaves of money, slaves of greed. But on the other, the followers of Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, Masih alayhi salatu, they also invented, it was bid'ah. We didn't make this monasticism imperative on them, they invented it. What is the root meaning of Rahab? Rahab means fear. You should fear me only. Rahab. Rahib. Who has fear? Fearful person. Rahib. Now Rahib from this Rahban on the scale of Fa'lan, Ghazban. Very much, extremely fearful person. Fear of Allah. Fear of the day of judgment. Fear of the accountability of the day of judgment. So that fear, fear that caused them all this renunciation, all this, you know, depriving the body of all its, even the due rights, that fear. Rahbaniyah. This now became an institution. So of fearful people who, are, who, are, who have the fear of Allah in their hearts, and due to that extreme fear of Allah, they are abstaining and they have renunciated all pleasures of life. But this is haram in Islam. La rahbaniyata fi Islam. Now we are coming to the third ayah of this last section. Ya ayyuhal ladheena, and this is to sum up the whole surah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa aminu bi rasoolihi yotikum kiflaini min rahmatihi. O oh, you who profess to believe, have regard of Allah. The meaning of taqwa, I never like fear. Khashiyah is fear. Rahab is fear. Khauf is fear. Every word has a meaning of its own. But ittaqa, taqwa is not fear. To have regard for something. Be mindful of Allah. Keep mindful of Allah. This is the best interpretation. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu taqullah. Always remain mindful of Allah. Always have regard for Allah. He is seeing you. You are in his presence. You have to meet him anyhow. There is no place to run or hide. Ilayhi turja'oon. You will be returned to him. Whether you like or not. Turja'oon is passive voice. Whether you like it or not, you will be made to return to him. Have regard of Allah. Aminu bi rasulihi. Why? Now here the emphasis is on Iman bil Rasul. Because the practical shape of deen is based on the Sunnah of Rasul. You have to follow him. Quran says, Aqimu Salah. How to Aqim? How to establish Salah? Quran is silent. Where in Quran you find five prayers a day? Where can you find that there are two rakat in Fajr Farz and three in Maghrib? Sajda is mentioned, Qiyam is mentioned, Ruku is mentioned. Tilawah and Qiraat is mentioned, Tasbih is mentioned, Takbir is mentioned, but this combination of all these things in this pattern, where can you find it? Sunnah. So actually, Deen, Allama Iqbal has very beautifully said in Persian, Ba Mustafa Barasa Khishra ke Deen, Hamaust, Agar Baula Rasidi, Tamam Bula Habis. Take yourself to Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
بمصطفیٰ برسان خیش ڈریگ یور سیلف ٹورس مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کہ دین ہم اوست دین از آل محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وٹ از اٹ مین دی پریکٹیکل فارم آف دین از ٹوٹلی بیسڈ آن دی سن آف محمد آن دی ماڈل آف محمد آن دی پریکٹس آف محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم قرآن ڈیوائڈ آف دی پریکٹس آف محمد از نتھنگ ان پریکٹیکل شیپ یو ڈونٹ فائنڈ دی پریکٹیکل شیپ آف دین از بیسڈ آن دی سننا آئی ہیو گیون یو دی موسٹ ایویڈنٹ ایگزامپل اسلاط و اماد الدین دیٹ دی مین پلر آف دین اسلا نو ٹو پرسنس کین ایگری آن دی فارم آف سلا If you leave away the ahadith and the sunnah of the Prophet I would choose another pattern from the Quran and you will choose another one. Some will say in Quran two prayers are also mentioned. Some will say three are mentioned. Some will say it's only, you know, just, just sit in the chair and remember and that's all. Anything can be said. This combination. And more than a billion people on the surface of the earth agreeing on the main features of Salah. You go to Hajj or Umrah, you find all nationalities from the East, from the West, from the South, from the North, Europe, America, Africa, Asia, the yellows and the, and the blacks and the whites and the reds, all. But you know the Salah is the same. Very minor differences where congregation is not broken, please note it. If somebody has raised his hands, congregation doesn't break. You have not raised, he has raised. But you know, main harmony, congregation is not broken. Someone has said, Ameen, loudly. Someone has said, you know, quietly. The congregation doesn't break. Perhaps, or supposedly, if somebody or some sect in Islam or Muslims would have thought that in every rakat there is one ruku, one sajda, Why one ruku and two sajdas? Why not two rukus and one sajda? If there are one sajda, then he will stand up after one sajda. And who believes in two, he will be there. They will think that it was the time of standing and they are in the prostration. The, the congregation broken. Now is not the, that harmony is gone. This harmony of a so big an ummah, three million of them making hajj. And the, song, and the salah is the same. The same rhythm, the same sequence, the same takbir tahrima, the same recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha, the same ruku, same comma, same sajda, same Jalsa, same again, dusa, second sajda, then standing up. So actually, I've given you an example of, song, of Salah. Now you expand it and project it. The whole life and the pattern, life pattern and the social pattern has to be derived and based on the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, and that is what we have discussed. That he said himself, Inni la atqaakum wa akshaakum lillahi. I am the most fearing person amongst you. And I have the maximum regard more than you. But I pray also, I sleep also. I, someday I am fasting, someday I am not fasting. This is my practice. Lan raghiban sunnati falla saminni. Whosoever deviates from my practice is not from me. He is not from my ummah. But here the most important subject is. Now you come to the main theme of the surah. What does the surah say? We have sent our prophets and messengers so that the system of social justice be established. We have sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I told you this very ayah number 25 of surah al No hadith, actually, when it is applied to personally Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it becomes that ayah. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ But how to do it? 
somebody say we don't find the methodology in Quran. Because nowhere in the Quran there is a chapter, the methodology of the revolution of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is it discussed in the Quran in any surah? Please give me the answer. Where will you get it from? The Sunnah of Prophet. He did it. Even the enemies, they accept. He brought out he brought about the most profound revolution of the human history. I gave you the testimony of H.G. Wells. You have the testimony of the person living in this very part of the world, Michael Hart. He is topping the list of the persons most influential in shaping and in, in, in turning the direction of the course of history. And let me give you another testimony from a Hindu of India. M. N. Roy was a very big revolutionary. The early revolutionaries of Bengal, in the early part of this century, 20th century, first revolutionaries in India against the Britishers, they rose, they were from Bengal and they were Hindus. One of them was M. N. Roy. Then he became Marxist, a very important Marxist communist. He was a member of the Communist International the top, top brass, international top brass. He gave a lecture at Lahore in 1920, Bread Lahore, Lahore. The title of the lecture was Historical Role of Islam. This book you can still find. It is printed in Bombay. Maybe you can find it here in libraries. Historical Role of Islam, and he says, Muhammad sallallahu brought about the most profound revolution of the human history. So actually, it's a irony of fate. So many movements are working, but they are not turning to the methodology of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That is why we are failing. The revivalist movements, the fundamentalists, the so-called fundamentalists, they are sincere. They are laying out their lives. What more sincerity can you expect from a person? If for a cause he is ready to sacrifice his life, nobody can question his, his sincerity. But we are not getting anywhere. Why? We are borrowing the methodology somewhere from the communists, somewhere from some wheat corn, somewhere from some other group. We are not taking to the methodology with which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought about the change, the profound change. So actually in the main theme of this surah, you have to make infaq for the cause of Allah. You have to go to fight for the cause of Allah. You have to try to establish this, this system of just, just social order given by Allah on earth. But how to do it? For that, turn your attention to the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Focus your high-powered lenses. Focus them. Try to read in between the lines of the seerah. And what I call, try to understand the philosophy of the seerah. You know, you have two different subjects. Masters in history. And you have another, masters in philosophy of history. History is something else. This thing happened, this thing happened, this thing happened in this year, in this year, and after that, and after that. And why it happened? What are the underlying principles of the rise and fall of civilizations and nations and empires? Why do some civilization rise? And why does, does it fall? Philosophy of history. So actually, the need of the time for all people who have decided. First of all, I said, you have to make a firm resolve. I have to live for Islam, die for Islam. I have to dedicate myself for the establishment of Islamic just social order, at least somewhere in the world. So that to show to the humanity at large, this is the system of social justice given by Allah, your Lord, your creator, through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come and see, this is the model. And for that, number two is, 
that you have to focus your attention, you have to deduce it, you have to derive it, you have to infer it from the seerah of Muhammad That I have tried to do in my own humble way. My book in Urdu, Manhaj in Qilab Nabawi, about 400 pages. Tapes and videotapes, audio tapes, they are available now in Urdu, in English. It's only if you, if you want, if you have the determination, you listen and view them. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha wa aminu bi rasoolihi. Put your faith maximum in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, they say in Persian, ke jai jast. First of all, you should have the firm belief, this is the place where I will get something. When you hope that here, there is a possibility of getting oil. Now you spend millions and millions of dollars on exploration. First of all, you have in your mind, this is the place where we shall get the methodology, the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you devote and invest your time and your intelligence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you to understand. Read in between the lines of the seerah. Try to understand the philosophy of the seerah. And that will give you the methodology. How is it possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might have made it Im imperative and firm upon us to make his deen supreme and not giving us the methodology? Is it possible? He has given us the methodology. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا for you, there is a good model in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But for those only who remember Allah, zakar Allah kaseera, who believe in the last day, man kana yarju Allah wal yawm al akhira wa zakar Allah kaseera, only they will be able to benefit themselves from the model of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah include us all among them. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa aminu bi rasoolihi yu'tikum kiflayni min rahmatihi Allah will give you double portion from his mercy wa yaj'al lakum nooran and he will give you light tamshuna bihi you'll be able to walk with it very beautiful one light is that will become apparent on the day of judgment. We shall be able to pass over that bridge or the, whatever it is that we shall see after, you know, death and after the resurrection. But it is mentioned here, some, some stage which you have to go through. And with the light will be only with the Mominians. Yajal lakum nooran tamshuna bi. But before that you need a light to walk on this earth. You need a light you can, who, which can lead you to the methodology of revolution. If you take it for granted, if you fix your attention on it, you get the light. The light is the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu But Mustafa barasa khishra ke di hama ust, agar bahu narasi di tamam bula beast. Again, I have to quote this couplet. Take yourself to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because deen is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and if you don't take yourself to him you may be thinking that you are on deen, on Islam, on taqwa but it is bulahbi it is the following of bulahb you might be thinking anything about yourself يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ And he will condone your mistakes. He will forgive you your sins. If you take to the right direction, it's very beautiful, please understand. If you go, are going in the right direction, someone is going very swift, someone is slow, but he is in the same direction. Someone has slipped, Again he stands up, makes tawbah, again goes. He is on the same direction. But whosoever has taken a wrong direction, he is doomed. So you straighten your direction. Qibla seedha karo. Or qibla kya hai? Taqwa of Allah. 
and Ittiba of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Straighten your direction. Everything. Deen essentially is love of God. Practically is the following of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now if you have taken to this direction, now if there is mistake, some are very you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created persons. Some are very strong, some are weak. So some is running, you know, fast. Some is just walking. Some is only dragging. But take as so long as they are on the right direction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will condone the mistakes or the slowness. But if you have taken the wrong direction, every moment you are going away from your destiny. ترسم کے بکابہ نرسی ہے رابی کیرا کہ تو می ربی بطل کستان است او بیڈوین آئی فیر یو ویل ایور بی ایبل تو ریچ کابہ یو انٹین تو گو تو کابہ فر حج اور عمرہ بٹ دی وی دیٹ یو ہیو ٹیکن اس گوئنگ تو ارس ترکستان ترسم کے بکابہ نرسی ہے رابی کیرا کہ تو می ربی بطل کستان است یو ڈون نو یو ہیو ٹیکن ارانگ وی یا ایوہ اللذین آمنوا اتقوا اللہ و آمنوا برسولہ یوتکم کفلین من رحمته و یجعل لکم نورا تمشون به و یغفر لکم واللہ غفور الرحیم لئلہ یعلم اہل الكتاب اللہ یقدرون علی شیئن من فضل اللہ و ان الفضل بید اللہ یوتیہ من یشاء واللہ ذو الفضل عظیم In the interpretation of this ayah also there are two schools of thought Most of the people think that this لئلہ La here is additional without any meaning. It means le ke la. Le ke, le ke. La is omitted, is to be omitted. This is one of the opinions and this is held by most of the people. And the meaning is so that the people of the book should understand that they have no authority over the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bounty is belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives it to whomsoever he likes and Allah is of great bounty he gave you the bounty you, pre- you proved that you are not deserving it now so he has taken it back from you now this fuzzle is with Allah he is authorized to give it to anybody you may be jealous you may be envious you may be furious with jealousy but nothing doing it's the authority of allah exclusive prerogative of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he chooses whomsoever he likes le ke ya'lama le allah instead of le allah if he read le ke ya'lama ahlul kitab so that the people of the book should know for certain that they have no authority over the bounty of allah this bounty all belongs to allah it is in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gives it to, he grants it to whomsoever he likes. And he is of great and immense bounty. But the other meaning, I was very much, you know, perturbed that most of the translators have nearly agreed on this translation. That la is here additional without meaning. I was never ready to, uh, to accept it. Why should Allah use a word without meaning? There should be no word in, a, in Quran meaningless. And I had an interpretation, but I was very fearful that I can't, you know, venture to give a, 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 an opinion of mine, single-handed. But then I found Shaykh Ab- Shah Abdul Qadir, rahimahullah, son of Shah Waliullah Dehlavi. In Muzihul Quran, he has taken the same standpoint that I am presenting before you. So it is now from him, not from me. He is the authority. I am not the authority. And he said it is le Allah, not le ke. Le Allah ya alam ahlul kitab. So that the people of the book should not feel, people of the book should not feel deprived. Allah yaqdiruna ala shayin min fadlillah. That now they have no access to the fuzzl of Allah. The fuzzl of Allah is still open for them. Come. Come embrace Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know the example is in Surah Bani Israel. 
Maybe tomorrow I'll be discussing something about Surah Al Bani Israel and Surah Al Kahf. Asa Rabbukum an yarhamakum wa in uttum udna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Yahud, to the Bani Israel, Your Lord is still ready to have mercy upon you. Don't be disappointed. The door of mercy, Rahmatullil Alameen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This door is open to you also. Come and embrace Islam. This Quran, in the Hazal Quran, Yahdi Lillati Yaqwam. This is the door to Allah's mercy and Allah's blessings. Come. So I think this is the interpretation. That the people of the book also shouldn't feel that their chance is gone absolutely. The doors are open. The blessings of Allah is still available for them. They don't think, they shouldn't think that they, they have no access to it. Because I don't have time, but I had, you know, the examples. That Quran says, Yaqdirun. This is actually used th thrice in Quran. And, for example, there is the, the ayah of number 18 of Surah Ibrahim. مَسَلُوا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَعْمَالُهُمْ كَرَمَادٍ اشْتَدَّتْ بِهِ الرِّيهُ فِي يَوْمٍ عَاصِمٍ لَا يَقْدِرُونَ مِمَّا كَسَبُوا عَلَى شَيْءٍ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الضَّلَالُ الْبَعِيدِ The hypocrites or the people who don't have the real faith, if they have done good deeds, they think that they have some, something with them. But the similitude of their good deeds is, like the ashes on which a very powerful wind blows and disperses it off. Nothing is there. They, they, they have nothing. They can't have any access to their good deeds. No reward is available to them. And there is another example in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 264. They now don't have any power to get the reward of those things that they had done because all those deeds were without sincerity, without the real belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, keeping these two examples in view, and because now I, I have no fear, because I have on my, have on my side Shaykh Abdul Qadir, Shah Abdul Qadir of Delhi, the biggest translator of Quran into Urdu. The first translations in Urdu were made by two brothers, two sons of Shah Waliullah Delhi. Shah Waliullah himself did the translation of Quran in Persian. And two of his sons, rather three of his sons. Shah, Shah Abdul Aziz translated and wrote a tafsir also, tafsir Azizi. Shah Abdul Qadir made a translation which was idiomatic. And Shah Rafiuddin, the third son, he translated and the, that was a literal translation. So Shah Waliullah Dehlvi is a very big person of our history. So this, because he's on my side, so I don't fear giving this opinion. That this means that even the people of the book shouldn't feel that they are now absolutely left alone, left out. No, they have the chance. Come, believe in Muhammad. Take the guidance of Quran. Asa rabbukum ayyarhamakum wa in uttum udna. Wajalna jahannam alil kafirina hasira. Inna haza al-Qur'an yahdi lillatihi akwam. Wa yubashir al-mu'minin al-lazina ya'amalun al-sayyat, ya'amalun al-salihat, anna lahum ajran kabira, wa anna al-lazina la yu'minun bil-akhirati a'tadna lahum azaban alima. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the courage to make a firm resolve. We shall follow Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Quran a light for us. We shall follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we shall... Focus our attention on the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see as to how to bring about an Islamic revolution, how to establish the just social order given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for humanity through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim.